Hey, welcome to X3, One Topic with three pundits, myself included. I'm John C. Dvorak, and I'm here with Andrew Eisner and Joe Ango to discuss the iPhone 4S and the untimely death of Steve Jobs, the CEO of Apple. Uh, first of all, the 4S, everyone was talking about uh, the, being the iPhone 5, and this was a big disappointment, but then well, again... Well, what's crazy is everybody was sitting there saying, oh, it's not the iPhone 5, I'm just going to wait for that. It's, it's a new iPhone. Who gives a if it's called the iPhone 5 or the 4S? Because well, like, you already ordered one. two. Well, yeah, but that's besides the point. I mean, it, it is a nice upgrade. I mean, the A5 is a much faster processor. I mean, it's twice as fast as the iPhone 4. Why didn't they call the it the camera's way 5? better. Why didn't they call it the iPhone 5? Well, I mean, because think about it, you know, for each of their incremental upgrades, it is an incremental upgrade. This is not like a major overhaul or whatever. But you remember when we went from the iPhone 3G to the 3GS, and then the iPhone 4 was a complete redesign. So iPhone 5 will be a complete redesign, more than likely. But who really cares? It's an upgraded one that's a huge upgrade, in my opinion. It yeah, was missing, you, well, I mean, I think it's an amazing phone, and I mean, I think the, the, what, what people are now saying is probably one of the, we talked about on a previous show, is that um, Siri is probably one of the more, you know, interesting features of this phone. You know, honestly, I don't really care about that feature. Really? I, I'm not that interested in it. The what? camera's what I'm interested in, and the A5 processor. Okay. But what it's missing is um, 4G, so it has, you know, best it can do is HSPA+, Plus, which is okay, but still missing LTE. It's missing a uh, bigger display with all, in a day when all these phones are now, you know, 4.3 and 4. Point, I mean, um, LG just announced a 4.5 inch phone with the highest resolution, uh, I think it goes to 329 pixels per inch, or the iPhone is the, three, uh, the Retina, which is supposedly bigger, more resolution than the eye can see, is uh, 326. So already there's a four and a half inch screen with, with uh, higher resolution than the iPhone. And but if you uh, can't actually see the pixels, then what's the point to have that higher resolution? Because things look better in higher re resolution. I mean, everything looks... Uh, whether but, but if you can't actually not, see that detail, is there going to be a difference between those two screens? Yeah, I think so. Because, first of all, it's bigger. It's four and a half inches. And uh, so, so LG, I mean, uh, 4G, big screen, and no redesigned case. So everybody was hoping for a thinner case. And uh, so they, you know, instead they got, you know, an upgrade, which is fine, and some amazing software, and a lot of new features, like iMessage and iCloud and all that stuff. So, I mean, I'm getting one. Why? You know. You need a new phone? I, I'm interested in this Siri thing. I, what is I mean, this? I, what, what, what Siri? The Siri is that what personal is that? virtual assistant. It's the one that you talk into and you say, Oh, you think you that know, actually is going to work? <laughs> <laughs> You've been in the game too long to believe everything that comes along. You were just on the turnip truck and it's like you just got back on it? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I, I, know, know, yeah, tell you. I don't think it's going to work I know you have a well. problem with these in sort of noisy environments, and we'll see. That's because they don't work. Works. That's my problem. <laughs> You know, if they yeah. worked, they wouldn't have a problem. So the next day, Steve Jobs unfortunately dies, mm -hmm. and uh, and we ended up with news coverage probably to an extreme. Oh, unbelievable! Yeah. Oh yeah. That. Uh, yeah. I, I had to sign off Twitter for the day. It was just it was too, too upsetting. It was almost yeah. a uh, uh, piling on phenomenon. I've never seen anything quite like it. Yeah. But the problem I had was not that people didn't give him his due respects. Is that I think there was a lot of misinformation that ended up coming out. Yeah. which I thought was bad because it's, uh, if Steve was going to get credited for anything, he should get credited mm -hmm. for what he did, mm -hmm. which was a lot of important things, but he wasn't credited for any of those things. Oh, really? well, he was in Crow, for example, CBS, the national network to broadcast, mm -hmm. they ran a little piece on him while uh, Diane Sawyer was in tears, mm -hmm. basically, and the guy who's, this is a national network, mm -hmm. they credited Steve with two things that were just ridiculous. One, for inventing, literally yeah, inventing the PC, the PC mm -hmm. and which is anything but true, mm -hmm. and for citing the Macintosh as the first PC. Wrong. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Then they go on to, to also give him credit for creating, out of the blue apparently, Pixar, mm. which was a company that was yeah. in existence that he, he, he invested. Bought he bought it, but mm -hmm. it was there. Yeah. And this sort of thing at, at a national level was very disconcerting to me because you, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you can get credit for, including promoting the PC in the form of the Apple II, which was not mentioned, yeah. uh, or nor, nor was anybody else mentioned in any of the, any of the mm -hmm. piece. And, and some of the stuff he did I thought was pretty phenomenal mm -hmm. and, and credit worthy, but the, he didn't get any of that. He got credit for stuff he didn't do, and I thought that was, uh, it was inviting... Uh, uh, issues down the road as, for, yeah. for, for, from, from all kinds of dimensions. Yeah. 
And then we also have people that, that uh, for example, Al um, Malik mm -hmm. kind of uh, indicated in his, uh, on his website that he was getting calls from Steve constantly, mm -hmm. telling him, you know, coaching him on what a great job he was doing. <laughs> wow. And I don't understand why anybody, a journalist, would, would put themselves in a position of this much yeah. compromise with, with anybody they're covering. That's right. And uh, I don't know what you, how you feel. Well, Steve, about I mean, how, well, he's a wonderful wonder at sort of working the media. I mean, look at he had a, a, a whole number of journalists. I mean, not that he didn't deserve. I mean, some you know like idolization, but but you know, for instance, uh, you know, Wall Street Journal, Mossberg was a big fan of apples and Pogue. I mean, it sort of got ridiculous. You know, you'd all you'd read a review uh, in, in the Wall Street Journal, and you knew it was going to be this glowing review of it, no matter what Apple product it was. So. He was, you know, Steve worked the media, and uh, he was a marketing genius, too. I mean, look at this is one of his big strengths, is that he out-marketed everybody else, and he was a master of it. Yeah, no, he did get, in that regard, although the major media didn't give him credit for yeah. that, which he, that, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Uh, Adweek did give him a nice write-up, and they discussed his, yeah. mar all just about the marketing. Yeah. Because he did a great job, he created those, those, those uh, iconic ads with the Mac and the PC, or That's the right. person, or that, or the Ellen Feist yeah. ad about, you know, yeah. she's talking about her Mac to yeah. eat the computer, eat, right. eat her paper, or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, keynotes were just awesome. I mean, just everybody watched him. They were just like staring at it. Just yeah, and he knew, how, yeah. To, he knew how to work the audience. And he also, well, he not only knew how to work the audience, but he used shills because he would have all these employees there yeah. that were essentially stacking the audience yeah. so you get the applause right. at the right moment. It was very well executed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, to credit him for with inventing the PC. No, it's, and, uh, you know, no, it's they, cool. they went overboard, I think. But that's, you know, I mean, sort of, you know, partially expected. He, you know, I mean, he, he made a major impact on society. And the, the interesting thing, too, is that, I mean, um, people fell in love, people fall in love with their Apple products, and, uh, and it does bring them a lot of happiness. And I think that, in general, they translate that love for their product to this affection for Steve. And so this is, I think, explains some of this outpouring of grief and outpouring of showing of love and affection for Steve. And I would feel that they were justified if they felt that they weren't going to get any more of these great products. Yeah. Uh, I'm not so sure they are. I mean, I think you get them for a while, as you say. I mean, well, but supposedly they, Steve Jobs has left a plan for the next four years. Like they have four but years worth of products I, lined up. I heard. I mean, they were they were going and doing a tribute on Charlie Rosen. One one person on there said, you know, Steve, at two o'clock in the morning, this guy at IDEO, I guess he was de de doing some of the design work on one of the products. Two o'clock in the morning, Steve calls him up and says, "Are you awake?" You know, and the guy sort of groggily says, "You know, I am now." He goes, "You think we could reduce that uh, the back from three screws?" to two screws, you know, <laughs> so, um, but this is the kind of attention to detail and this is the kind of thing that I think Steve was so good at, the visual, I mean, this is, was his forte of, you know, creating a stunningly beautiful product and, uh, you know, just that you just saw it and you just wanted it, so, I mean, that was one of his strengths and I think that was as a result of his, you know, some of his early experience with, what, calligraphy and, and some of the other more arty type, uh, mm -hmm. you know, interests. Yeah, he was the most artsy craftsy uh, of all the CEOs. Although yeah. it was minimalist, yeah. uh, very much a um, you know Copenhagen style of uh, design where yeah. you didn't have a lot of frills. Yeah. It wasn't uh, over It yeah. wasn't decorative in that regard. But uh, yeah, and I and I think uh, it, it's, it's still kind of interesting in hindsight because some of the things he did like. Uh, because uh, Gates gave him a kind of a glowing, off-handed compliment, but in fact, Steve was incredibly insulting to Bill, especially in that one uh, recorded TV show where he says, you know, the problem I have with Microsoft is they, is, is essentially they have no taste or bad taste. <laughs> there, and he was disgusted by it yeah, because yeah, yeah. the Microsoft was just they didn't care about about the image, the you know, the, the, yeah. the it's funny that it still hasn't yeah. changed. The aesthetics are a problem with, yeah. but the funny thing is, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I could be wrong, and I, there might be some small company out there that, that could prove me wrong, but Apple was the epitome of good taste yeah. in, in, in design. Totally. And they, other people are still, you know, trying to do it, but there's, there's an, the one element missing, which will be missing with Steve gone, is that he was the arbiter. Mm -hmm. And an arbiter of taste is not necessarily someone you can replace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. for one thing, they have a very rigid right. op opinion about what's what. And yeah, you can get somebody else in, but their rigid opinion is going to be something else. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. He was a tyrant. 
And he was a yeah, he was a tyrant about it yes, specifically, exactly, exactly. which is why he was irked with Microsoft. That's right. And and that's why I think that Apple will, you know, eventually suffer his loss, just like all the other great corp companies. You know, whether it's Microsoft losing Bill Gates or Intel losing Andy Grove. I mean, whenever one of these great uh, CEOs, or visionaries, leave, the the company always ends up sort of, uh, you know, declining to a certain extent. Don't you think? Except IBM. Well, even after the Watsons, they had they stay. Uh, well, I guess. Uh, the, Went up. Opal was for better. a while, yeah. And it went up and went up, and they, the company PC is, Junior. They, well, they they made mistakes along the way. There's no doubt about that, mm -hmm. including the PC itself. They had that whole group in Florida, remember? Right. But the fact is, IBM has managed. They lost their way for a while. I don't. I think they're lost. Now their way they're now. back. Sure. No, but they're back doing what? They're just a service company. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, although they kept their research and development, they kept a lot of. There's still an IBM culture. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what Apple does. I think it's going to be a while, like I agree with yeah. you, and I think the four-year plan is probably, I think you're probably right, but at the same time you still don't have the arbiter of taste saying, oh, going in the wrong yeah. direction. Yes, no, yes, no, yeah. So, uh, I but get, the thing about the five-year mark, we'll, we'll definitely see whether, how well, bad things if you, are Well, when be. Steve was first actually kicked out of the company, mm -hmm. Uh, and Scully took over in, yeah. in, a, in a boardroom coup. Yeah. Uh, it took uh, a number of years oh, before yeah. Apple started to decline. They went through Mike Spindler, Gil Emilio. I right. Mean, boy. It was during the it finally. Became, well, Spindler was kind of a you know had issues. He was apparently <laughs> went under the table under his desk a lot and and and, and cried like a baby under yeah. some circumstances. I don't know why, <laughs> but. Uh, he was supposed to be this, what, German taskmaster, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Spindler. But they, they company just went into kind of a slow decline right after Scully, and it just kind of, and it yeah. took a while for people to notice. But, the, but if you do, a, I, I believe this is true, if you do a uh, counting for splits, mm -hmm. when Jobs showed up, the stock was six bucks. Mm -hmm. Something like yeah. that. I think it was trading for 20, but in counting yeah. for splits, it was like six or five. And uh, so, you know, that's a long way up, which also means there's a could go a long way down. Oh yeah, it could be the short of the decade if it, mm. if it when it goes. It's over 400, I think, as we speak. That's well, it's interesting up. about the stock. Now, it's slightly off topic, but um, every single time that it, recently, when the iPhone 4S came out, everybody was like, "Oh, the stock price dropped. That means that this is going to be a horrible iPhone. Wall Street doesn't like it." Blah blah. blah. Well, people forgot to realize that every single iPhone, except for the original one, caused this drop in the stock price. Well, it's back, by the way. Well, yeah, of yeah. course it's back. I mean, that yeah. happens every single time. I think it's possibly, I mean, I, this never used to be the case with Apple. You can almost bet, you can almost bank on the stock if you can get some futures. When they did an announcement, Steve came out and did a dog and pony mm -hmm. show. The stock that week would go up 5% uh, maybe mm -hmm. or more. Only recently, I think, because I think it's be, the stock's now being, or the, these phones are being overanalyzed. And, and I, for some reason, when there's a lot of attention, they, they tend to uh, be hypercritical. And the, and, and the people that are investors, they, they see hypercritical uh, uh, writings mm -hmm. and, and opinions as negative, and I think the stock drops mm. for that reason. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Because mm. it, once they reanalyze it, it always pops back up. Yeah. So it's a phenomenon yeah. that's, that's screwy. Um, and I'm not, I can't explain it. Anyway, you've been watching X3.